ESPN presents the 1981 Final Four featuring the Indiana Hoosiers, the LSU Tigers, the Virginia Cavaliers, and the Tar Heels of North Carolina. Hello and welcome again. I'm Bob Lee. 1981, Philadelphia Spectrum was the site for the Final Four. North Carolina was there with a contingent led by Al Wood, Sam Perkins, and James Worthy. Virginia, well, you had sophomore 7-4 center Ralph Sampson leading the way for the Cavaliers, the first ever Final Four appearance for that school. LSU came in with a gaudy 28-3 record. And Indiana, playing on the very same floor where Bob Knight's team of perfection won the title back in 1976. In fact, the people that run the spectrum arranged to make sure that Bob Knight had the very same chair that he had in 76 on the IU bench in 1981. We'll be getting off to Philly in the 1981 Moments to Remember, the Final Four, right after this. Apparently not intimidated by the packed house of over 18,000 frenzied college basketball fans, plus millions more watching on national television, LSU controlled the tip, and Ethan Martin found freshman sensation Leonard Mitchell, who left Indiana center Ray Tolbert flat-footed. Isaiah Thomas, the first sophomore consensus All-America in Indiana history, to Landon Turner, who evened the score at two apiece. LSU took a brief three-point lead at 5-2, but neither team could pull away. The point guard for each team, Indiana's Thomas and LSU's Martin, proved their worth in the early going. Thomas's drive with just over three minutes gone gave the Hoosiers an 8-7 lead, but proved costly when he was assessed his second personal foul on a charging call. Martin provided the Tigers a 9-8 advantage. Thomas hurried up court, hit Randy Whitman. Indiana 13, LSU 11. Moments later, Martin found senior All-America Rudy Macklin. LSU 16, Indiana 14. Bobby Knight was not pleased with the way things were going. Now move through the offense, and then after we made four or five passes, if you have your shot, go up and stick it in the hole, but don't take the shot on that basis. Now, come on. LSU moved with its own purpose by gaining a four-point lead. First, it was Mitchell off Martin's feed. Indiana still seemed confused when Martin picked his way through traffic, spotted senior Willie Sims for a 20-16 LSU lead. Thomas hit back-to-back -back buckets, including this nifty 10-footer. LSU center Greg Cook sandwiched the basket in between, and the Tigers still held a 22-20 advantage. With four and a half minutes left in the half, Indiana regained the lead 27-26 when Tolbert snatched Martin's missed shot and fired a bomb to Thomas. LSU went back in front 28-27 on Howard Carter's 11-footer. Martin completed the first half scoring with a pair of free throws on Thomas's third personal with just over three minutes remaining. Neither team shot well in the first half. Indiana just over 36%, LSU 40. The Hoosiers were out-rebounded 24-18. Things weren't going right for the Cream and Crimson. Let's just do one thing this half. Let's play 20 minutes of basketball our way. Let's go, folks. That's just what the Hoosiers did. It was one of the most classically executed halves in NCAA history. Other than Thomas's 12 points in the first half, Indiana had nothing to brag about. Tolbert was held to three points and only one rebound. Apparently, Knight's halftime oratory provided inspiration as Tolbert introduced LSU to a mere sampling of what the Hoosiers had in mind for the second half. Indiana would score the first 11 points, nine by Turner. Including the last three minutes, 14 seconds of the first half, the Tigers would go over eight minutes without a point, and Coach Dale Brown was understandably concerned. You gotta just keep on pressure on them all the time. We're gonna be all right, but go for your tenth. Come on, fella! But Turner was devastating in those opening minutes. With 16 and a half minutes left, Thomas drew his fourth personal, and LSU acquired another opportunity to get its act together. The score, 36-30 Indiana. But the Tigers didn't anticipate that trading first names, Isaiah for Jim, would make the Hoosiers even tougher. Jim Thomas, number 20, no relation to Isaiah, would finish with only two points, but it was his nine rebounds, two assists, two block shots, and a steal that allowed his teammates the scoring glory. And Turner would
was one of the beneficiaries as he was simply marvelous in those first moments of the half. Indiana pulled ahead 38-30. Carter finally, yes, finally broke LSU's long drought when he hit from the baseline with just under 15 minutes left. And the game wasn't out of reach at 38-32. But with Jim Thomas performing like an acrobat, Indiana was able to play the disciplined style preached by Knight. LSU was frantic as Indiana outscored the Tigers 10-2 after Carter's shot had ended that first dry spell. Whitman's shot put the Hoosiers on top, 44-34 with just under 13 minutes remaining. LSU hit only four of 17 shots. Indiana wasn't necessarily blistering the net themselves, nine for 25, but the Hoosiers had more opportunities because of a 20 to nine rebound edge. With six minutes left, Indiana had built a 54-39 lead. We're really gonna see what we're made out of because our hearts are hurting right now. We'll see what the hell we're made out of the last six minutes. But everything was hurting for LSU. It's defense. Tolbert put Indiana up 60 to 39, and the turnovers. The Tigers would finish with 19 for the game. Talk about pain. Perhaps this series of shots late in the game told the frustrating story of the Tigers' disappointing second half. Count them. Finally, Macklin desperately tries number five. It just wasn't LSU's day. It was a frustrating feeling as LSU suffered its worst loss of the season. Indiana had outscored the Tigers 40 to 19 in the second half. 